Good, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Pascal. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, two things. A, B. A, this president took over and he said, what a mess I inherited. I remember his words on the day. I don't know what the heck he would have done in January of 2009 with that mess because of that budget that you talked about and referred, we're still on A, you, you referred to. There was no capitalizing, there was no investment, and if the federal government did, didn't get involved, as they have in every economic downturn in the 20th century and the 21st century, God knows where we would be. Now let me give you a little history, Mr. Chairman. Inauguration Day 2017, President Trump issued an executive order that directed the agencies to undermine the ACA. You want me to read it to you? Two, January 2017, Trump's HHS department cut millions of dollars in outreach, customer assistance, total enrollment time. Let's put this all on a record. It's the record. You can't make this stuff up, you know. HSS used taxpayer dollars intended for advertising vital ACA enrollment information to fund an ad campaign intended to undermine the ACA. They did the same thing yesterday. May, 20, May 2017, House passed the AHCA, which would have left 23 million more uninsured over the next 10 years. This is painful here, isn't it? Remove protections for those with pre-existing conditions. Implement an age tax, an age tax, and discrimination against women increased 2018 premiums by 20% and got Medicaid with $800 billion in cuts. We have very short memories. September 2017, HHS threatened states with decreased funding for pursuing policies that would lower premiums get you, cut any investment, any research into lowering premiums, some predicted by as high as 30 percent. Then on October 2017, the Trump administration announced they were canceling cost-sharing reduction payments. Remember that? The CSRs. Remember that, Mr. Chairman? You smiled about that. What did it do? The CBO projected would leave one million more uninsured it would raise premiums 20 to 25 percent over the next two years and increase the deficit by 200 billion. A mere pittance compared to 2.3 trillion. I understand that. December 2017, the Republican tax bill, remember that, Mr. Chairman. The Republican tax bill added 2.3 trillion to the deficit, cut three years off the life of Medicare trust fund, short memories, and also zeroed out the individual mandate. The latter is predicted will lead to millions more uninsured and 15% premium increases. That was in December of 2017. 2018 of June. We're getting close, don't worry, I'll be done soon. The Trump administration directed the Department of Justice not to defend the constitutionality of the consumer protections in the ACA. Think about that. We're working on cross purposes. We're not working together. You know, problem solvers? You gotta be kidding me. Come together with the other side? Let me read that sentence again, Mr. Chairman. Maybe it hasn't sunk in. The administration directed the Department of Justice, remember those guys? Not to defend the constitutionality of the consumer protections of the ACA. Don't protect the consumer. We're going to wrap this thing out, even if we can't repeal it. Their legal argument, which has been denounced by liberal and conservative scholars, would gut protections that ensure that more than 130 million Americans with pre-existing conditions are not denied or charged exponentially more for coverage on June 20, 2018 also. The administration continued their streak of encouraging enrollment in junk plans. 
Sound familiar? When they finalized a rule to expand access to association health plans. I feel good doing this. I really do. I know. Gentlemen's time is expired. I'm not expired. finished. I know, but your Can time Can I get somebody expired. else's time? Gentlemen's time has expired. Does anyone wish to Chairman, move? Chairman, I move to strike the last strike word. Strike the last word. Mr. Thompson, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield my time to Mr. Pesco. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. From California, you're doing a great job. <laughs> AH, AHPs and short-term limited duration insurance don't have to cover essential benefits for older people or outright reject coverage. I know this is painful. It should be. Expanding use of these plans will lead to millions leaving the individual market, leaving a sicker risk pool and raising premiums. And then also in July, this month, the Trump administration announced they will not make $10.4 billion in risk adjustment payments, which ensure insurance companies don't cherry pick. You know what that means? You know what that means to premiums. When you cherry pick, you know what it does to the risk market. I'm not teaching you anything. You know what I'm talking about. And try to enroll only healthy populations. What a great plan that is. Only enroll the healthy in insurance plans. There is not one person in this room who doesn't know what the consequences of that are. That is. The administration stopped these payments at a time when insurance were determining their participation in rates for 2019. How convenient. So the rates are going to go up just before the election? Oh, I see. I'm beginning to understand this. July 2019. Your department, the administration's department of HHS, cut outreach and consumer education funding to local organizations by $10 million. You really twisted it, didn't you? And what you do when you're twisting it is trying to sap every drop of blood out of the ACA. You know how many bills we came up, to, how many amendments we had since 2010 to try to change this and make it better? You never were with us on any of them. The amendments we've come up with here, you're never with us on anything. So what is this Gumbaya? We're going to all get together. We're all going to have a nice time. We're going to listen to you. You're going to listen to us. And then we'll come up with a resolution. Well, that's what reasonable people do. That's what reasonable people do. How dare you sit there and blame us for the mess that you caused? And we're willing to say, OK, bygones be bygones, bygones. Let's have a resolution. Let's have a solution. That's the fair thing to do. That's the American way to do. Because if you don't, and we don't, then a lot of people are going to suffer, not just with preconditions either, not just with preconditions. Mr. Chairman, you're, you are, I consider, a pretty reasonable guy. But you've blown this. You really did. There is no reasonable way, if you look at the facts, I didn't make this stuff up. I didn't pick it off the shelf. When you take a look at the record. So when Mr. Trump came into office on, in January of last year, 2017, when he said, oh, oh, what a mess I inherited. That is so much malarkey and baloney, it isn't funny. I would have wanted him to be back. I hope he can go back in history, put him in charge in January of 2009. God save the queen. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Rice, you recognize strike the last word. Let's talk about phony and malarkey. Remember, you can keep your doctor. Remember, you can keep your policy. You remember that this is going to save the average family $2,500 a year. You want to talk about phony and malarkey? Oh, my God. <laughs> Actually, you know, the, the, the statement that Obamacare would save the average family $2,500 a year, what, what, that had to either be just an outright falsehood or just complete lack of knowledge about what was in the bill. To think that applying a health care tax, to think that applying a tax on health insurance companies, to think that applying a tax on pharmaceutical companies, to think that applying a tax on medical device 
devices would drive down the cost of health care? Who in their right mind, with any common sense, would think that any of those things would do anything but drive up the cost of health care? And in fact, you know, it played out exactly as Republicans said they, it would. I wasn't here then, but it played out exactly as they said it would. In the first three years, you know, the, the, the Democrats and, and Barack Obama were smart to, to say that d delay the inception until after uh, the president's second inauguration because they knew if it went into effect beforehand and people actually got to see it, he wouldn't get reelected. And so it went into effect in 2014. In the first three years, before President Trump ever took office, the premiums, instead of going down by $2,500 per family, went up 107% in three years. The premiums went up 107%. Now let's think about that. What did we get with the Affordable Care Act? The object was we have these group of uninsured people, right? Well, let's talk facts. 85% of Americans were covered before the Affordable Care Act. Between private insurance, employer provided, and, and, and individual insurance, between Medicaid and Medicare, 85% of Americans were covered. This was before the quote unquote protections of the Affordable Care Act. Now, Mr. Pascrell said a minute ago, if we did away with these protections of the Affordable Care Act, 137 million Americans would lose their coverage. That would be over uh, like 40% of the population. Well, they were covered before the Affordable Care Act, before the quote unquote protections of the Affordable Care Act, and they were covered for less than half the price. What did we get from the Affordable Care Act? The percentage of Americans uninsured dropped, or, or excuse me, the percentage insured uh, went up from 85% to 91%. Now, you know, most of those folks, because the government gave them insurance. Now, I'm not against more people being insured. I certainly want to do that, but I wanted to do it at a reasonable cost. What was the cost of insuring 6% more Americans? The cost of that was the other 85% who already were insured had to pay 107% more. That is absurd. I mean, any, any fool <laughs> with common sense could come up with a better plan than that. 85% to go, to go from 85% to 91%. 6% more people covered, the other 85% have to pay 107% more. That is an absurd deal. So let's talk, you know, uh, what were the words he used? Phony and I can't remember the other words. Malarkey. Obamacare, the ACA, was based on a foundation of phony and malarkey. <laughs> the entire prospect that it would drive down the cost of health care was obviously wrong from anybody who understood the provisions of the bill. And the result was entirely predictable. The people that I'm hearing back from in my district are, what are we going to do? We can't afford this insurance anymore. The, 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 when, when Mr. Pascrell refers to the protections of the required coverages, let me tell you, in my business, my little 20-person law firm, I covered everybody throughout my entire practice, and I, none of the policies that I ever bought had all those protections in them. So, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, to say, that, to say that the actions of the President are the reasons why these premiums have doubled, uh, that's fantasy, because Gentlemen, they actually doubled expired. in the years before the President took office. I yield Gentlemen, back. Time's expired. Mr. Please Chairman. Back. Mr. Yes, Chairman, may I ask a question to Mr. Barber? No, not at this time. Does anyone member wish may to? May I ask a question of you? No, Mr. Pascrell. Yes. I'll ask again. Does any member wish to strike the last word? Are there Mr. any Chairman, amendments? I move to strike the last word. Mr. Mr. Larson, you recognize the strike Mr. Pascrell to ask a question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Larson. If it's not 
I want to be corrected, Mr. Chairman, if, if need be. Let me ask you this question. The only people affected by the ACA are those people who are enrolled in the ACA, or does it not affect the entire market on special requirements that were not in existence in other plans? So if the answer is no, it affects a lot of other people besides those few people that you talked about, sir. I'll talk about those few people. But let's say, let's say it had nothing else to do but the rest of the market. Is that what you're saying? No, I don't think that's what you're saying. Because people who had regular plans, as whatever you call them, many of those people did not have preconditions that could be responded to. Many of those people were women who had to pay more than men. Well, the gentleman you Excuse yield? me. Now, when I'm finished, you could jump in. I like that back and forth. But let me finish. So many people who are not so-called, quote, unquote, enrolled in the ACA are affected by what we passed, how much the insurance companies have to put in and responding to their customers. That changed as well. That goes for everybody. It did not just include those people in the ACA. Would you agree with me, sir? Where I differ with you in that respect is you said 137 million people with pre-existing conditions would lose their protections. Well, the great bulk of those people were covered before the ACA. But if you take those conditions away, if you take those prerequisites away, they were covered those people are going to be affected just like those people who are enrolled in the ACA. That was my point. That was my point. So therefore, that's why you're selling us cheap policies today. You're selling us these policies, and I think some of them are necessary, but it's not the solution. And we agree that the ACA wasn't the total solution, so let's change it together. But no, you had an alternative plan. Ho, ho, yo, ho. There's an echo here. Where is it? You don't have it. So it's a lot of chutzpah to question any of the numbers. I could have been reading off the chalkboard for crying out loud. Now, these numbers I can prove, I can assure you. We're not going to solve this unless we do it together. And unless you join us, we're not going to do it. So therefore, you will have accomplished what you set out to do, to bleed the only plan that's in existence that helps people who didn't have insurance before. You blood it. And now, you're stuck with it. So you want to give us these few bills today and tomorrow you're going to give us a few bills to show people that you're really concerned about their health? That's not the answer, my friend. It is not the answer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentleman yields back. Does anyone member wish to strike the last word? Are there any amendments to the amendment in nature substitute? There are no amendments. Questions on the adoption amendment in nature substitute. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, no. no. Can you cheer the ayes have? An amendment nature substitutes agreed to. I'll now recognize Mr. Johnson for purpose of offering a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the committee favorably report H.R. 6305 as amended to the House of Representatives. Question is on favorably reporting the bill H.R. 6305 as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, no.